become productive in, in California agriculture, you need to expand, you need to grow, you need to modernize. When my grandfather moved here, he started on an 80 acre a homestead that was given to him by the federal government. My father farmed about 500 acres, 800 acres, and now I'm farming about 1,500 acres. My primary production is forage crops, and then secondarily, I grow a lot of seed crops. Wheat is one of the lesser crops that I grow, but it's a good rotational crop, and, uh, and I chose that wheat for this project because the project finished in December, and it was one of the only crops that I could plant in December and uh, now we're gonna harvest the first crop off of this subsurface drip uh, that was uh, provided with a sweet grant funding. Thanks for coming over. The sweep grant is another tool that we use in our toolbox. It allows us to do things that aren't profitable at this time. It allows us to, to use state-of-the-art technology and, um, and allows us to do it on a large farming scale so we can use that data, use what we learn onto other farms. I'm uh, on the board of directors for the California State Farm Bureau. I'm actually on the board for our local county farm bureau. So we spend uh, a week a year and we go back to Washington. You know, we're trying to feed the nation and if we don't tell our story, nobody else is gonna tell our story. And if you get a family farm that goes back to Washington, D.C., you can usually gain a lot of respect and a lot of influence. <music> I've already had a field day out here. I brought other farmers in to look at this to, you know, farmers are curious. In the last five, 10 years, water is becoming more and more valuable in the state. If we can apply less water, we can use that other water in other fields or in other areas of California. About the top six inches never gets never gets wet, stays powdery dry. And as we start getting down a little bit lower, we're about six inches there, start picking up moisture. So there's various parts of this um, of this weather station, and we've got the solar panel that's powering it. You've got a backup battery system and, and, and data logger that's recording the, the information. And then you've got all these instruments here that are, they're actually measuring how much evaporation is going on in the crop. And they're, they're actually telling me how much water the crop is actually using at any 24 hour, 12 hour period. When we're putting optimum amount of water on it at the, at the time, we're getting a water savings, plus we're producing more crop with less water. Without a doubt, the, this new technology is going to increase yield. When you look out across this wheat field, even before it's harvested, it's very uniform. It's very same height. The grain is the same size. They're plump, they're filled up. So I anticipate a, probably a 25% yield increase. And looking at it, it appears to be a very um, good yielding crop. And then quality of it too. We, we grow a specialized wheat here. This is called a desert durum. It's only grown in Imperial and Yuma counties. And this wheat demands a very premium price. And we have to meet these high premium protein levels to get those prices. And with this drip technology, we're able to put fertilizer on at, at optimum rates and at the optimum time. And we, we probably will have very high, um, high testing wheat too. On average, in agriculture, production it doubles every 20 years. And that's what keeps us ahead of foreign areas like Argentina, Australia, Brazil. And they're still behind us in our technology. Between myself and my son and my son's kids now that are gonna be fifth generation, taking this farm over in another 30, 40 years, um, it's, still, it's still something that we love to do. We're doing it because uh, it's, we make money at it and we enjoy it. And it's a heritage that we're trying to, trying to keep up, um, trying not to let my grandfather down what he started.